high school, social media meant nothing more to me than just uh, like an online autograph, autograph book where my friends and I could exchange stories, share our hobbies and interests, our likes and dislikes. And uh, basically, we just used social media for fun. But now, uh, gone are those days, you know, gone are the days when social media was all about talking about ourselves and amusing ourselves. Gone are the days when social media was just used as a means to, uh, to cyberstalk our crushes or to find our one true love online, although that is still highly possible. Don't ask me why I know. But at present, social media is so much more than that. So although it is undeniable that social media has paved the way to the selfie generation, it has also provided a great opportunity to those who knew how to look beyond themselves and to use social media for a noble cause, and to some, even for an eternal cause. And I am referring to the new breed of, the, of uh, defenders of our Catholic faith, and this includes the new breed of pro-life advocates and activists who are fighting for the same principles with the same zeal and unwavering passion. Only this time, they have taken the battle online and they are actually making the most out of this new dimension that social media offers. So how? So let me, uh, let me tell you a story. So... Um, I was one of those who got into the war of words online when the RH law was still a bill. So while it was being debated upon by our lawmakers in the halls of Congress, another debate was going on in the social networks. And I must say that the latter was way more intense. Debating online was um, tiring and it could also be draining and time consuming. But you know, when you know the truth, you can't just keep it to yourself. You have to go out there, wherever there are people, and tell them about this truth, especially when there are people from the other side who are spreading false information. And so, uh, that was what I did back then. And at first, I felt alone, but I just found comfort in the Word of God. I remembered what Jesus said, Behold, I am sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves, right? That time, I really felt like I was a sheep in the midst of trolls. So, good thing one day, an online, an online pro-life group came to my rescue, and this group was called Filipinos for Life. And that was when the new chapter of my life as a pro-lifer started. But to Filipinos for Life, or FRL, their story began sometime prior to that. So, FRL's story began when, on September 30, 2010, a man who liked to go around disturbing religious ceremonies pulled his Damaso stunt at the Manila Cathedral. Uh, the slide, please. Thank you. So it was because of this persecution and disrespect towards the Catholic Church, which brought the Catholic netizens to their senses. And we just realized that we couldn't just sit around waiting for harvest time on Farmville when our church was already being attacked. And so um, one week after that, the page, I Oppose the RH Bill, was formed on Facebook. And this was actually founded by Mr. Francis Raymond Gonzalez, the same founder of the Facebook group 100% Catholicong Pinoy, which now has more than half a million likes. And this page, I Oppose the RH Bill, immediately began, uh, immediately became um, a platform for debaters, online debaters, and there you would you'd find active discussions, also active trolling, and well, substantial conversations. And because of these, 
the, um, the likes of this page grew to thousands and eventually to tens of thousands. And then on January 2011, in January 2011, Monsignor Pepe Quitorio uh, of the CBCP Media uh, gathered the admins of 100% Catholicong Pinoy and I opposed the RH Bill page to ask help to beef up the presence of the church in the social media. And then, after that meeting, almost immediately, Anthony James Perez, one of the staunchest pro-lifers online, gathered the most active pro-life de debaters on Facebook. And after a month, or nearly a month, okay, so there was the picture, okay, that, the one that happened in September 2010. Okay, thank you. Okay, and then this is, uh, uh, this is a screen cap of the I Post the RH Bill page and 100% Catholic Kong Pinoy, which was founded on October 7, 2010 by Francis Raymond Gonzalez. And then on February 12, 2011, uh, Mr. Anthony James Perez officially founded Filipinos for Life on Facebook. And then on February 13, so one day after its official founding, some of the pioneer members finally had their first eyeball or meeting offline. That was at the PICC during an anti-RH rally. Our group actually grew so fast. It was as if it, has, it had a life of its own. And it, uh, it didn't just grow because we added just anyone we knew. It grew because of um, the members whom we invited and we thoroughly selected them, actually, because everyone had something to bring to the table. So in our group, um, it, it also helped our cause that our members uh, came from other active groups as well, such as the CBCP Media, the, the um, Defensores Fide Foundation, Knights of Columbus, uh, Couples for Christ, Pro-Life Philippines, and many more. And um, the individual members also are of different professions. So we have medical doctors, lawyers, nurses, teachers, college professors. Um, we have religious people and uh, media people. And we also had a physicist and uh, many others. And also, we are scattered all over the world since we have Facebook. So we have members from not just from the Philippines, but also from the U.S., Canada, uh, Spain, Japan, China, Singapore, right? And then, so we were we were doing the uh, we were spreading the pro life message online. But one day we just thought of taking the battle not just online but offline as well. And so in April 2011, our group decided to meet to talk about the modules that we were going to use in our lectures, in our future lectures. And soon we found ourselves giving talks in uh, schools, parishes, communities, and we were not just um, sharing with them the pro-life message, but also giving chastity education and um, uh, f talks on family life, career, and vocation. Right, so there. And we not only did we use social media, but we also used other forms of media, such as radio broadcasting and podcasting. And we also had a chance to share the pro-life message on TV as one of our members guested on the grand RH Bill debate on GMA7. So while the information online and offline, information campaign online and offline was going on, we were also um, lobbying in Congress. So, and in the, in the process, some of our country's leaders, especially the pro-life ones, including their staff, joined us in our advocacy. And some of the staunchest were Mr. Dennis Socrates, Ms. Mitas Magsasay, and uh, Ms. Cutie Del Mar. And um, despite our efforts and prayers, the RH Bill passed. We all know that. But we are also all aware of how it was passed through bribery and illegal methods, how the pork barrel was used as an incentive to push its approval, 
and that was 280 million worth of pork barrel per congressman. And so, yeah, we were knocked down, but we were not knocked out. And if there was anything good that came from the passing of the RH bill into law, we pro-lifers are now more determined to junk this RH law and to prepare to combat the other anti-life bills. So the battle is far from over. And we, are, we continue to hope that this law will be declared unconstitutional. And so we are also taking concrete steps to achieve this. So on February 14, 2013, Filipinos for Life filed a petition against the RH law at the Supreme Court. So we celebrated our Valentine's Day at the Supreme Court. And many other groups and organizations also filed petitions against, against this law. And on March 19, 2013, the Supreme Court considered our petitions and stopped the implementation of the RH law for four months. And then on July 9, okay, four months later, we organized this uh, small uh, this rally or festive gathering to express our support and to pray for our pro-life lawyers who were uh, who were representing the anti-RH petitioners, and it was attended by by around 800 to 1,000 people. Most of them were coming from schools and organizations. Most of them were young people. And one week later, on July 16, 2013, the Supreme Court extended indefinitely its status quo anti-order, effectively stopping the government from implementing the RH law. So there's still hope. So we can still junk this law. Yes, the RH law is, is still on hold now, but we should not relax. We cannot relax because the other side, the advocates of the culture of death, are also on the move. And let us remember that RH is just one part of the anti-life agenda. Expect them to push same-sex marriage, divorce, abortion, and euthanasia next. So, and yes, they're also taking advantage of social media. And they won't stop until every, until every life is desecrated, until every child is corrupted, every woman objectified, every, every marriage destroyed, and every family broken. And broken families equal a broken society. That's a broken future waiting for us there if we do not do anything about this now. If we do not make the most out of the time, resources, skills, and available media that we have. Having said all that, okay, so we don't want this one to happen, right? Okay. So having said all that, we should not underestimate the power of social media to connect people and to push our advocacy. I cannot imagine how FRL would have come to exist without Facebook. It just amazes me how I met these brilliant people who shared the same values and the same love for God, the same love for life and love for, pe for pizza. And we were once just strangers, but now we are already like family. And uh, I literally did not know any one of them in that group prior to Facebook. So God really moves in mysterious ways. And he uses FB2 to bring about something good. Imagine where evil and wrongdoing was, so much good came after. And I believe that it's really the Holy Spirit that has been working all this time. You know, allowing things to fall into place, whether offline or online, online or offline. And so right now, if you feel that the Holy Spirit is prompting you to join us, please do. So I invite you to um, join us in our advocacy by uh, sending us a message and, of course, liking us as well on Facebook. So Filipinas for Life speakers and trainers. And for the young people here, if you want to take the lead in spreading the pro-life message in your school or in your organization, Jo please join Filipinos for Life Youth. So if you're interested, you can approach me later or you can send me a message on Facebook. And uh, together, let us dare to dream of a world where every child is cherished, where every woman is respected, and where families are united in God's love. And this can only be possible if we make the pro-life message known throughout the world. 
one FB post at a time, one tweet at a time. So all for life, life for all. Thank you very much and good afternoon.